everybody. I hope you guys are having a glamtastic day out there in the YouTube world. Welcome to another episode of the Glamping Guys YouTube channel. And I thought it would be fun to show you how we get ready and break everything down on our travel day and hitching up the truck and getting ready to get out on the road to our next destination. I've already done a video where I showed you guys how we pretty much break down uh, the whole inside and get all that prepped and prepared for travel days. So now I thought I'd show you how the glamping guys prep their fifth wheel for travel days on the outside. But as we like to say, we don't camp, we glamp. So even when we're hitching up, we like to do it the glamping guys way. So the first thing we're going to do is empty up the tanks and I'm not going to bore you and show you the nasty poo-poo part, but obviously you need to empty all your tanks. We personally like to empty them right before we travel because we do not like all of that extra weight in the RV. It can add to unnecessary weight on your tires. It can also possibly cause a tire blowout if your tanks are completely filled up. And also because we clamp and don't camp, we never even use the freshwater tank, so that's for the most part empty anyway. So we'll be emptying the one black tank and the two gray tanks. One for the bathroom and one for the kitchen. So what I do first is just I go ahead and just empty out the black tank. And we're going to pull the lever here. And boom. Now. I've got a little clear thing on it, so all you should be able to see when the tank is completely empty. And then I also have a pressure washer built into it, so I'll actually turn that on as well, and that will kind of like pressure spray the inside of the tank and help clean that out. Once I empty out the tank, I will fill it up one more time with some water and I'll let it soak for maybe an hour or so and then I'll empty it one more time right before we leave so it helps to get even all of that extra debris that's kind of like all gunky and stuck on the sides and it also will help uh, just uh, keep it more maintained and a little bit cleaner. So once I'm pretty much done with that, I'll let it finish and then once that drains, I will also empty first my bathroom gray tank and then I will empty my kitchen gray tank. And what that will do is it will clean out the sewer hose of all of that nasty poo-poo debris. So in theory, you wanna wear gloves still once you're handling your hose, but in theory, it should be pretty clean on the inside, so you shouldn't have too much of that poo-poo stuff you gotta deal with. Now, um, another trick that I'm going to do, and I'll show you that in just a few minutes, it's also how to clean your sensors as you're traveling. But first, we're going to go ahead and just finish up emptying the tanks. And with the magic of editing, we will be right back once that's done. Hey, guys. So now we're in the bathroom. What? I thought we were doing the outside. Well, this is a little trick that I'm going to share with you guys, and I'm sure a lot of you might already know this. First off, just want to give a little shout out to Happy Campers. We are uh, in no way um, being paid for this or whatever, but I love Happy Campers. This is for the black tank and it is non-odor. And I love it because you don't get that fake like porta potty smell or anything like that. But usually what we do now is that I will add two scoops of Happy Camper to two to three full bowls of water and flush that into the tank. So now you've got maybe about three gallons as you're traveling, that water with the Happy Camper deodorizer, it's gonna be sloshing around the whole inside of the black tank and it's almost gonna be kind of like a washer. It's gonna agitate and clean off the sides. It's gonna clean off your sensors and I can guarantee you that you're gonna get a much better sensor reading on your black tank the next time that you park and use your black tank sensors. Now, of course, it's only going to last you a couple of days because I'm sure a lot of you seasoned uh, campers out there, you guys definitely know that with your black tank, you're just never going to have a good, a good true sensor reading. But after a while, uh, you just get the hang of it and you pretty much know when to dump, when, when it's time to dump. Uh, so anyway, the other trick that I do is that I will also add about just a half a scoop 
to the shower drain and I'll run about two gallons of water into the shower tank and I will do a half a scoop into the kitchen sink and run about two gallons into that gray tank as well. So as we're driving and bumping around and rocking and just having a good old time, all three of the tanks are getting nice and sloshed and cleaned and it just gets all the gunk and debris and food debris and residue and hair and, and dried skin, you know, just all that gross stuff that goes down the drain that you never see, but you know it's there. You know, so uh, anyway, uh, I could go on and on about how that would actually make probably a really bad by like, RV horror movie, but we won't. So once we do this, pretty much the whole inside will be finished. So with the magic of editing, we're going to go back outside and we're going to check on the hoses and get those all packed up. Let's go do this. Hey guys, we're outside again. So we have the inside of the tanks maintained for the internal cleaning as we're driving and my little helper here and I are going to continue finishing up the outside and if you guys are wondering why I have this little towel here uh, Ziggy has uh, decided to get himself a little bit excited and uh, show the lipstick so we're gonna keep that towel right there so we have no distractions so moving on we are now going to go ahead and pack up the hoses. So to avoid getting those nasty germs and especially that nasty E. coli, nobody wants that, we are putting on our gloves. I've got two storage bins. I have one for my sewer and then I have one for my fresh water. All right, so let's go ahead and get these hoses packed up. Now, one little trick that I like to do is I always keep a clean towel. You don't want it to be dirty because again, cross-contamination, but I will get a little towel and I'm gonna hide Ziggy because uh, for some reason, again, he's just, uh, is, is I guess really enjoying the outdoors today. <laughs> so we have a towel that we are going to use to wipe all the dirt off the water hose because you guys know I can't stand dirt. Now, of course, with the sewer hose, I'm just going to get the water hose and just spray off the dirt and debris, and then we're gonna pack it up here and then pack it into the cargo. And then the last thing I'll do is turn off the water at its source. And then as I'm slowly bringing in the water hose, I'm also just wiping it off with a towel that I've moistened with just a little bit of water. Okay guys, so we have all the hoses and everything packed up. So the next step is that we're gonna go ahead and get the truck and go ahead and get it positioned to get it hitched up. And um, hey guys, uh, one thing I forgot to mention as well is that uh, you always wanna make sure that you have your tailgate down because when you're backing up, you obviously don't want this to run into your pen box. So we got the truck all backed up and lined up perfectly to go ahead and get it hitched. But before we do that, we have to obviously bring in the slide outs first. So what I always do is I do one walk around and just make sure that nothing's under your slides, that nothing somehow maybe got underneath. You just basically wanna make sure that nothing is obstructed as you're bringing in your slides. I'm gonna load up Ziggy and go ahead and put him in the truck. I've got the AC running, so he's gonna be nice and comfortable. And we also pack like a little cooler with some snacks and some water as well if we're gonna be going on a longer drive in between stops or if we have a long drive back to home base. Well guys, we got the slides in. Everything looks great on the interior. I'm also getting ready to also turn off the main breaker 
which is very important because I have been told that when you plug it in, your main power, the shore power co uh, cord, that sometimes it can put a little surge through the circuitry and the wiring in your RV. So you always want the main breaker to be turned off, plug in, and then turn on the breaker, and you should be good to go. So we're gonna turn the breaker off, we're gonna lift up the steps, we're gonna lock the door, then the most important thing that you wanna do too before you uh, hitch up and start driving away is that we are also going to turn and close both of the propane tank valves. And that can be a step that a lot of people overlook, so I can't stress to you how important that is. But we're gonna do the door first. So I'm turning off the main breaker. Uh, a little tip that I do too, depending on how far you're driving. This morning I cranked both of the ACs uh, as low as possible to get it nice and cold in here. So hopefully uh, when we get to our next location, it won't take us long to cool the place down. But this is the part I hate. I've made this comment in a, a past video. These steps, they're amazing, but I hate that they go inside, but I do have a mat on the floor to catch all the dirt. Okay, so we're good. Now we're gonna shut the door. Make sure and close your handle. And I've seen this in other videos too. A lot of people will forget and leave their steps down and you start driving off with your steps down, dragging through the dirt. And a lot of times they'll get mangled or just tear off. And then um, as safety, make sure and lock your handle. So we'll make sure and get the door locked up real quick here. And just for safety, I do the deadbolt and the door lock. Okay, so I went ahead and turned off this propane tank. We'll get the other one in just a second. We're getting ready to almost hitch. We're gonna bring up the four rear jacks, but you always wanna clean off your jacks before you retract them. They do have seals on them, but they're designed to only get so much dirt off. So you basically wanna clean them off really good with a rag sprayed with a little silicone spray, and it will keep your jacks very well maintained, and it'll keep all the dirt and debris from going up inside into the hydraulic system itself. Here's the silicone spray. Just shake it up real quick and I'll just kind of shake it up here. Spray it. So just real quick, I'll just come over here. And I'll just get that off and then I'll kind of just get up here where the sill is all the way around and just get some of that dirt and debris. And then of course here same thing and this will keep them nice and clean so when they retract and you will have many years of enjoyment if you just do this simple little thing right here so basically I'm gonna do the same thing I just did on this side I'm gonna turn off the propane tank and I'm gonna clean all three of the jacks so I'll meet you guys around to the control center on the other side. Okay, so before we get ready to do the jacks and adjust the front landing gear to hitch up, the first important thing that you wanna do is you want to disengage your hitch and open up the jaws because you can't do anything if the jaws are closed. You know what I mean, guys? And another little tip, we bought this little step stool and I just keep it right behind here so I can just step right on up and reach over. Open up the jaws and now we're ready to back in and engage but we still have to do the jacks. We're gonna go ahead and engage the automatic leveling system here and turn it on. And with mine, you just hit the up and down arrow at the same time and hold that to engage. Green light turns on. Great thing with my system, it has the hitch height, so it will remember where you uh, disengage from when we first uh, uh, came here to the park. And all you need to do is do hitch height. And what it will do is it will retract all four of the stabilizing jacks and it will adjust the two front landing gear jacks to the height of the hitch and we should hopefully be able to just perfectly back in with no drama. Because guys, I know I've been talking fast in this video, but it is so hot today. It's supposed to get up to 100, 
but I wanted to take advantage of this beautiful like, light and sunshine to do this video for you guys. So that's the only reason why I'm kind of talking fast. <laughs> so let's go ahead and push the hitch height button. And here we go. So as you can see, the jacks in the back are lifting. Usually the middle ones go up first. Now the back ones are going up. And then the front might adjust just a little bit more. But nope, we're good. So awesome. So at this point, we should be aligned and ready. And you know, sometimes the hitch height works and sometimes it doesn't. In this case, I still need to lower the landing gear just a little bit more because we're still up a little bit high. So this is actually kind of a good thing to show you guys. You know, it's not perfect, but uh, it, it has worked perfectly sometimes in the past, but you still have to sometimes do a little bit of fine tuning. So basically we are just gonna go ahead and tap on the button here for lowering the front and just slowly bring it down a little. We'll back in the truck, we'll engage that jaw and then we'll uh, get ready to finish up the rest of the process. All right, looks good. All right guys, we got it backed in, everything's engaged. Now of course, you want to put in the little pin to keep the handle closed. And then we're going to also put the breakaway cable onto the handle because with your breakaway cable, in case an accident happens and you disengage from the fifth wheel, it will engage the brakes. So what we're gonna do now is just get this complete here. We just got the truck engaged. We got everything hooked up. Also, make sure you want to uh, hook up your tow power cable at that point. And then once everything's hooked up and we're ready to go, you just want to bring your jacks maybe just about an inch up off the ground, which is what we're going to do real quick. Okay, so now all the weight is on the truck and now it's really important that you want to do what's called the pull test. So I'm going to get into the truck. I'm going to engage the trailer brakes uh, with that little squeezy thing. I don't even know what it's called, but engage the trailer brakes, drive very slow. And when you feel it tugging, that means that you're hitched up, everything's engaged and working properly because if by accident the truck did disengage from the hitch and you drove away, the rig is literally just gonna fall like an inch to the ground and it's not gonna crash on the back of your truck. So again, it's just a safety test to get yourself in practice of doing and it's called the pull test. So I'm gonna get in the truck and we're gonna give it a little pull. Okay guys, everything tugged and pulled the way we wanted. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of the wheel chocks, get those packed up. But first let me get the landing gear raised all the way back up. All right guys, we're almost done. So everything's all ready to go with the truck and the hitch. The last thing I need to do is just turn on the lights and we also do a little tap of the brakes, taught to walk around behind the rig, check the flankers, check the brake lights, do a one more final walk around, just make sure everything looks good above you, on the sides and below you. And then we're gonna do at the very end, bring in the power cord, and then I'm gonna lock up the cargo holds and we'll be on the road to our next destination. So until next time, guys, all of you have a glamtastic day out there in the YouTube world. Thank you so much for watching how we do our hitching up the truck, the glamping guys way. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. You wanna say bye, Todd, Mr. Cameraman? Bye everybody. Bye guys, have a great day, bye.
leave a comment to say hi. If you like us, please subscribe. And if you don't, our little fluffy dog will attack you. Arr!